Well, I finally gotten up enough courage to try to record another sharing session. It seems like it uh, is always something else to be done or some reason that I can't do this. And several days trying to get back to it. Um, now, humbly asking you, uh, 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 pleading with you to give some serious consideration to a passage of Scripture here that I intend to read in your hearing. It's a portion of the letter, uh, the first letter that we have that Paul wrote to the congregation in the city of Corinth. And uh, as you will probably remember, they had some terrible problems there. Uh, very terrible. And uh, I think I misspoke there. I meant to say 1 Corinthians chapter 1 starting in verse 10. I think I said the 10th chapter. They had a situation there where the, uh, the congregation of disciples had uh, turned the uh, meeting for the Lord's Supper into a drunken feast where the wealthy had plenty to eat, the poor didn't. No, the conditions were so, it was impossible to take the Lord's Supper. Uh, they had uh, misunderstanding of the use of the spiritual gifts. They were lacking in love for one another. Uh, they had a case of immorality in the assembly uh, one of the congregation or one of the uh, assembly of disciples was uh, committing things uh, unspeakable not even spoken of he said among the heathen and the reason I'm going into all that is that <clears throat> and even though they had all this kind of problems, right here in the very first part of the letter that Paul wrote to those disciples, he says, uh, starting in verse 10 of chapter 1, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be partakers, I uh, beg your pardon, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are, there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. Now, just... Please 
<clears throat> hold your finger there and, and keep that in your mind. We're going to come back to it, hopefully. We'll go over here to chapter 3 <clears throat> and read, I think it's verses 3 through 7. Well, I'll just start the first of the chapter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, Paul now writing to the congregation in Corinth, continuing his letter. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? And then he, he goes on talking about how that these men were just servants of the Lord, and not to be followed. And... Um, now I want to go back... Chapter 1. I want to go over that with you just very carefully, please. If you have not already noticed it in this reading, I appeal to you. Uh, I, I, I plead with you. Try to look at this with an open mind and read it carefully and thoughtfully. Let me go over that first reading with you just very carefully now. Verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 1. Notice he says, now I beseech you. He was pleading with them. As I am trying to plead with you. And he calls them brethren. And he, he, he beseeches them or he begs them by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is, I, I take that to be by the authority of Jesus Christ. And what's he begging them to do? He says that you may speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you. Now here is a city where a number, I, I don't know how many, but a considerable number of people has been taught by the Apostle Paul and they believed and obeyed the gospel. And God had added them to his assembly that he's calling out with the gospel. I don't know how many, as I said, but there was a considerable number of them. And Paul was begging them in the name of Jesus Christ not to have divisions among them. I have spent hours talking with you, trying to get you to understand that when men decide that a handful of these in God's assembly 
will collect themselves into a society that they call a church. say this is going to be our church right here and others doing the same thing their church somebody else's church and then they say this is our name here and we've got a discipline or a creed or a catechism. And then Paul goes on here and says that the situation in Corinth was that there were contentions among them factions, divisions, conflicting situation. And it goes on into detail about it and says, here's what the situation was. There were people down there in that city, disciples of Christ, who had pulled apart and said, I follow Paul. Others said, I follow Apollos. Some more said, I follow after Cephas, the apostle Peter. And then there were some who said, I just follow after Christ. Just follow Christ. Could could, could one find any better description of the situation that exists today among disciples of Christ? If the Apostle Paul could come back to this world and walk into our time here, and look around and see these church buildings dotting the landscape along the roads with their different names and different creeds. Contending for their doctrine, their church, and trying to build up their organization. Would he not say the same thing to us as he said to these disciples in the city of Corinth? You know, we have become accustomed to this situation. And it, it, it reminds me of the the old story that they used to tell about boiling a frog. They used to say that because a frog changed his body temperature to the temperature of the air or the water around him, that you could take a frog and put him over in a pot of just cool water there put a source of heat under it and raise the temperature on that water so ever, ever so slowly that you could boil him and he'd never jump out of the bucket or out of the pan. I kind of doubt that myself, but that's what they used to tell us when we were kids. In any case, it makes a good illustration. We, things just change around us ever so slowly and we 
we just sort of get accustomed to it. We just sort of accept it. And uh, it looks just like normal. Uh, and that's the way it's supposed to be. But my dear listener, if, if words mean anything, this passage that Paul wrote to the Christians in Corinth strictly condemns the practice of disciples being divided up into different societies with their own names and creeds. I mean, if, if that's not the case, I'm at a loss to understand anything. I mean, th this is plain. Th this is not difficult material. Um, if we could read the instructions uh, explaining how to make a cake, I mean, it looks to me like we, we could understand this right here. But we, and I talked about the oxen being conditioned, and, and that's all they know. And we, we get conditioned, and, and, and we accept these things. And, and we overlook it and uh, even try to justify it in our own mind. And I don't think I've told this story in uh, one of these other tapes. If I have, I'm sorry. But my grandfather, my grandfather partner, was raised as a farmer and farmed most all of his life, among other things, doing rock mason work or whatever. But he told me that when he was a grown man, his younger years, down in the valley here below Mont Eagle, they plowed their corn when it was tossing, when it was making the, uh, sending up the tassels, or tassels we call them, to drop the pollen on the ears uh, uh, and the silks of the ears so they pollinate the corn. And at that stage of growth, the roots of the corn would be spread out in the ground below the stalk. Corn be up higher than a man's head, maybe, or as high. And they'd go through there plowing with maybe a double shovel, mule, ripping that ground up. And he said you'd get out the end of a long road, you'd have to stop and rake the roots off of the plow, out off the plow point, where he'd turn around and go back. And he said you'd look back three or four rows over the where you'd plowed, and he said that corn would be wilted. But he said, we thought we were helping it. He said, we thought we were doing it good. Because they'd seen it done that way all their life. But they were hurting it. They were reducing the yield that they would get and at the same time, working themselves in the heat, the misery for the man and the mule. But they thought they were doing it good. And they accepted that practice just like because it was the way it always been done. And I think that that is a very good illustration to explain the situation that we disciples of Christ are in today. This just 
is accepted the visions among disciples. And one of these days, hopefully a little bit later, I'm going to try to talk about why I think that this is stays here and why that people resist this teaching uh, that I'm trying to do uh, so strongly. Uh, I've made some more notes here and I I want to try to uh, share them with you. I've got just a few minutes left in this tape. About the situ further on the the situation that we have, uh, I, I tried to make a case reasoning from the scriptures earlier in this series that to have this type of division and to form separate churches, societies, organizations was without authority. And, and is unscriptural. And try, what, try to show you why I think, and I'm convinced from my study that that is important. Now, I'm trying to show you and help you to understand and pleading with you to consider the fact that from what I have read to you, this situation is in direct conflict with the appeals, the pleading of the Apostle Paul who said in this same letter that the things he wrote unto them were the commandments of the Lord. If we got a letter from the Apostle Paul today, if God could send one somehow, miraculously, that Paul could write one and send it down here, and it said this it, very same thing right here, if it came from him, or if God could send it by an angel or something. And, and it was read to us, would we not understand it? If he, if he wrote this and said, you disciples of Christ ought not to have divisions among you. You ought not to be saying, I, I, I'm a Baptist and I'm a Methodist. I'm a Church of Christ. I'm a Catholic. I'm a Lutheran or an Episcopal. I can just go on and on and on. Wouldn't we understand that? And, and would we just toss the letter aside and say, oh, well, it did not make any difference. It'll be all right. We like it this way. Suits me better. I, li I like the way to do things over here. And he likes the way to do things over there. I don't know. So I'm suggesting to you that our present situation among disciples of Christ is in direct violation of a prohibition where the Apostle Paul prohibited. He, he said, you must not do this. And yet, we do it. Some, some may be able to ignore what I said about it being unscriptural and without authority. They say, well, that doesn't make any difference. But how, how can we justify being disobedient to a command where they were, where we, by this example, are told that there should not be divisions among us? That's contrary to the will of Jesus Christ. I don't see how we can ignore it. We can't justify it. Now, there, I've heard it, heard some talk about how, how, how people speak and, and they talk about being members of, of a church. And I, I think I may have mentioned this before, but, but I've heard an objection on that and people say, well, it says we're members of the body of Christ, 
and the body of Christ is the same thing as the church, therefore we're members of the church. I think that's a mistake, and, 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 and I know people are going to say, well, you're being nitpicky again. Uh, well, that, maybe I am. I don't think I am. You see. What we have done, when we set up these different churches, we say he's a member of the Baptist church, and she's a member of the Methodist church, and he's a member of the Church of Christ church. I like you to say he's a member of the Kiwanis Club, and he's a member of the uh, uh, Sportsman's Club, and whatever. Or he's a member of the historical society because he he placed his membership there. He 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 made an agreement, signed up, paid his dues, and he's a member, recognized by the that society. And I think that's what we that. A lot of us didn't realize it, but when we said he's a member of the church, that's what that's why we were saying that. But somebody said, oh no, he's a member of the church because the church is the body of Christ and we're said to be members of a body. What that is, though, is a confusion of figures. And it carries the wrong idea. You see, let's use, for example, the flock. Christ is the chief shepherd, and he said he has these sheep in his flock. We wouldn't say so-and-so is a member of the flock of Christ. Or we wouldn't say uh, he's a member of God's building. No, you're a stone, that figure of speech, you, a living stone in God's building. Another figure of speech, you are, we are sheep in the flock that belongs to Jesus Christ, the chief shepherd. Now, then there's another figure that says that we are all members of the body of Christ, like a, it's the figure of being parts of a of a human body. The fingers, ears, nose, eyes, feet, and in um, in that figure, we are taught that we are to help one another, and there we have different duties and responsibilities, and we've talked about that. I think Paul. If my memory served me correctly, dealt that in about the twelfth chapter of this letter to the Corinthians, and we're reading here now. But when we say, when we take that figure that compares the the called out assembly to a physical body, and that we are all members and different parts of that body, we take that figure. And move it over here and say, he's a member of this church. It's not the it's not the way it's used in the scripture, and it's a it's an important this difference because we're talking about being a member of a society, as I said, like being a member of a business club or a commercial club. As and it it carries the wrong idea. It it. it it promotes and uh, recognizes and authorizes diff, uh, divisions in the body of Christ. Now, I think my time is just about up right there. Uh, sometimes I, I, I get weary of trying. I, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying seeking pity. I beg you, please consider this. 
and, and the harm that it's doing. And I, I'm going to try to share some of that with you as we go a little farther. And then hopefully I, uh, we'll get off of this subject uh, in a reasonable amount of time. I appreciate you considering these thoughts and, and I hope that you will uh, think about it very seriously and study your, the, the text and if you find it be of some value that you'll try to put forth an effort to help remedy this tragic situation. The subject that I, I'm going to have to, or the, the material that I'm going to have to deal with here in this sharing session is uh, a great burden <clears throat> to me, I, I put it that way. Um, I dread it and I regret it. But I'm committed to facing the truth. And uh, as I said earlier, trying to get that beam out of my eye, if I'm going to try to get the speck out of my, my brother's eye. Uh, <clears throat> I've got this under the heading of the results of such confusion and division that we've been talking about. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to go through some thought processes with you. Uh, sort of like, uh, there's fancy words for it, I can't think of them right now, but 